<laughs> Hold on, Zach. You want to? Zach, <laughs> Dave can go back and check it. That's Zach gone wrong. No. Zach gone wrong. <laughs> Zach gone sexual. Oish. Dude, we'll put that. We'll we'll put we'll put a compilation of that happening. Do Literally, you know when we announce Zach as our host. The intro to this video, Grim, take it away, baby. <laughs> All right, let's talk about probably one of the best shows to ever come out, right? I got to admit, MCU, fucking, you guys killed it with this show. Let's talk about Moon Knight. So first, we're going to introduce our host. <laughs> bro, <laughs> the dumbest I ever heard, bro. bro <laughs> you want the you, whole ass bro, pause. Why don't you... Why don't you Chris rock this and hold it till after I introduce everybody? Uh -oh, here he comes up. <laughs> so we got our host Remo as myself. We have Curly Bardak or Gabe. Yes, we sir. have Nova Nuclear, aka Lewis. Hey. We got yes that I mean yes <laughs> Raph. and we got. Yes. This oh. random, random ass person that just came into our house and said, fuck it, I want to work with you guys. Zach. What's up? Who's appearing two weeks in a row. Actual, with no video done for us yet. Hey, hey, you want to wait till Kenobi comes out? I'll, you won't get me off your ear. Zach, you're still on the internship position. I want you to make sure you're very clear on that. <laughs> yeah, you never let me forget it. A very unpaid position, just like us. <laughs> Label that in the t Discord. Just make him that title. <laughs> The Boys, intern, let's Zach. let's let's jump into a Moon Knight episode one. What did you guys think of it, Lewis? It was pretty pretty good. It exceeded my expectations. They had the relationships that I wanted, and it's basically, I Oscar Isaac's to Oscar Isaac in that scene with him with Mark with Steven and even Con Conchu, where I thought we weren't going to hear him a lot. But we had a good amount of him where I really loved it. Gave me some Death Note vibes out of here. And not only that, the story plays so well in this where we got everything. And still kept it a mystery throughout. And I still feel there's still so much more that we can see in the future. And yeah. I gotta give it a lot of praise for it. Because I'm giving this episode a 9 out of 10. Mm, 9 out of 10. I holy shit, that is. Really I can't good. say I disagree, but I can't say I agree at the same time. It's. All right, so we'll, 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 we'll get segue back to into it. We'll, you. Get, to it. we'll, we'll get to no, it. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. Why don't we segue right. into you? What do you think then, if you don't agree that much? So, the things I agree about with Lewis is that this is the start of something, probably that's going to be beautiful. For me, I am a big fan of mysteries and misdirection and things being hidden from us until they're absolutely needed no. to be revealed and what's great about moon knight is that we sort of have this opposite perspective going from what he is in the comics in the comics we start we always start somewhere with mark specter or one of his other personalities not not really stephen grant and so to have this unraveling of this guy realizing that he is an already pre-established superhero and not like real like making himself to become one is interesting it's a different look on how you can create a hero so what would you rate it with all of that in mind um i think i'd give this a strong like eight out of ten this was really good i was always entertained i liked looking back into finding these little easter eggs and stuff and yeah it was just it was just really cool Okay, so so far at least we've had high grades. All right, uh, Raf, what do you think? I'd probably rate it like same as Lewis nine because it the the way they sneaked a lot of like psychological things in to trip up your mind was so sneaky, and I didn't even realize it until after like I rewatched the episode, and I even pointed some of them out to you guys, like the fact of like the goldfish at the end. It never had just one fin; it always had two since the beginning of the episode. It always had two fins. Like, and nobody even questioned that shit after you watched it. After you finished the whole episode, you're like, oh, okay. Don't even think about it. It's like, yeah. The, that sneaky shit that they that they put in, but it, it's meant to be there to trip you up without you even knowing it. It's so good. Yeah, because what's great about this show is that they put St uh, Stephen Grant as this unreliable narrator. And it's sort of just 
his perception of reality is so warped that he doesn't believe what he's seeing anymore. It's just right. phenomenal. I, I fucking I fucking agree with that. All right, Zach, what do you think? I I feel the same as Lewis, honestly. I think it's a solid nine because it did everything. And I agree with what Gabe said. It's it, a mystery. You start out at a blank slate with knowing nothing about Moon Knight's world at all from basically the ground up, and you're thrown into the deep end practically with everything. So I love that they do this whole like every character interaction is like so so intricate and like Ralph, what Ralph was saying about details and simple things. Everything is layered, which I love, and it and especially when you start off with Stephen Grant having so many different personalities, it's it's like you can't the you as the watch the viewer cannot sit on what is actually going on you're being thrown in every direction yep for me huh, i mean i love the entire thing there was just one thing that bothered me a lot um mm -hmm. it was a bit of like the casting choices i guess or like the 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 choice of, of settings and accents and all that um, but other than that, I'll also rate it 8.5 to 9. Like, it was really good. It just bothers me how the story takes place in Britain, correct? And, um, out of nowhere, he travels to this field-like area, which could be presumably somewhere in the Netherlands. I don't know if it says where. It says but... in the Alps. It says it's in, yeah. Alps. So it could be it could be anywhere around that area, yeah. Yeah, so it's it's like, there's no specific location, but it's still Europe. So how the fuck do all the town village people speak American? You know what I'm saying? Like like that like the casting choices and like the location choices to me just felt weird. Like um for example, Stephen Grant is supposed to be the rich personality and the more like um what's it called? Like the more Bruce Wayne type of guy. And they changed him, which I don't mind. I think they did a fantastic job. But like, why is he British? And then why is the the Alps people American? And then why is the main villain very very like very American, even though he's supposed to have some Egyptian in? Like, it's just the casting choices were weird to me. It, it feels very whitewashed to me, at least, especially since Moon Knight has a lot to do with other Egyptian people, even though the main character is a Jewish man. So. Other than that, like taking that away, I thought the scenes were amazing, the quality was amazing, the acting was amazing. Uh, like Raph said, the whole psychological aspects that makes you think like Stephen Grant, I thought all that was amazing. My only bunch would be just that the whole whitewashing. Yeah, I mean, for me, the worst thing about it was like not just that, but the CGI was like for the Alps was not good. That was it just did not I think it was intentional. It looked worse than Falcon with Soldier. I think that was supposed to be intentional because it was like to Steven a dream sequence because later when you see like the the fight sequence with the um with the jackal looking demon hellhound thing, it's actually yeah. pretty clean cut and like Moon Knight looks pretty crisp too as a character. Like I don't think there's any issue in that. I think that was intentional for that sequence to make it seem not real like he's in a dream more for the viewer than anything and like to create that a feel but yeah it was it could bad be on i agree purpose. i think it, it was be on purpose. purpose because if that's if that's intentional that is bad like that is poorly done for a studio that is so good and has such a good track record on visuals because it looks similar to falcon and winter soldier like that um their uh highway sequence like their highway fight scene it looks similar to that but it just looks worse like when he when he just wakes up, it's just kind of like, it's not even that the uh, the imaging makes it look like kind of unreal or dreamy or whatever. It's just bad. Like I think I it's think just we like uncut, wait. like really weird images. I think we gotta wait until we see like more episodes because I feel like. You know, you know how like some animes do it, where like you know they save most of the budget for that one specific episode, where like everything just goes intensely, like fucking off the walls. Yeah, especially yeah, like they did in the final true. show. Yeah, it could it could also be like the um what I call the Saitama effect, where obviously the animation in One Punch Man is fantastic, but then when you see Saitama, a lot of times he looks very round, circularly, and like an actual cartoon. So I think it's the same thing. It's just like. There's actual uh, cinematography and actual CGI put into work into this film, but then certain things that they want you to see differently, 
they they make it feel low budget on purpose. I feel right. like, like that specific dream sequence. Dream being in quotations, mind you. Sure. I mean, there's there's it's also like again we've we've stated that like Steven's point of view is unreliable because what yeah. he might be seeing as reality might not actually be there. No, because like I remember when he wakes up from the bed and there's sand all over the ground, but he doesn't question that. But then when he sees like one block of wood differently, he questions that. So obviously, Stephen Grant is not the best. I mean, like he put the sand on the ground there, though. Yeah, it's like a like, sandwalker alarm system. But the yeah, thing but that's still, the thing that's like, not reliable. It's still moved. Yeah, like the thing that's not reliable is that all of that, no matter what you do, can be redone. Like by his mm-hmm. other personality, it can be redone, retasked. There's no like tripwire in a sense that you can like ca- catch himself on it it's that's, all being able to be redone really by the one personality because he knows that that's because that he thinks that he just has a sleeping disorder that, that's what he thinks in the right. beginning until, until he slowly learns that he has a an identity disorder so yeah that's a makes, um and, personality disorder, so, I believe it's, called. It's, it's it's yeah it's understandable why he does those things because he, he just thinks that he just Wake, he's like sleepwalking throughout the day and that's how he's hurting himself until he literally finds out that I might have an identity insur- disorder throughout with Mark. Yeah, I mean... Also, it doesn't hurt that he gets jumped by a religious nut. It's too. also... it's also So speaking of religious nut, we have to talk about Ethan Hawke as Arthur yes. Haro and how I think picking him and Oscar Isaac to work together on this project was really, really well done. Both of them are just amazing. Um... I think with Ethan, he's just he just plays the character so well. Like we see the opening shot is of Arthur putting glass in his shoes and the true essence of a cultist. In, in how in, yeah. in, in some religions, in some like uh in some temples, they have this sort of like uh tradition where it's either like walking through charcoal, walking through glass. It's sort of like this thing of like where you're in constant agony. And what's great is that he puts in his shoes. He doesn't show people he does it because he's a true believer of Amit. And that's just You can beautiful. even hear the glass crunching when he's like yeah. uh, on yep. like in every scene. Yep. Yep. Another, another thing I want to point out is um something that we give credit I give credit for Andrew Garfield and like his body language as Spider Man, Oscar Isaac also brings to um Moon Knight and Steven. And it's like you know that scene where he's like giving back the scarab? And how yeah, I, I rewatched it. That was so his good. His arms like, and his his like his like whole his like, facial his... expressions when he's trying to make things move, like make his hands move, like that's so good. It also oh. just feels yeah, like and the detailing from like his body is just all right. yeah. All right, let's let's be honest. These two actors are phenomenal, right? Whether it was gonna be an MCU movie or not, like uh, show or not, these two actors will always kill it. Oscar Isaac, holy shit, he right now. As a uh, Hispanic actor, he is, like, one of the number ones. Him and uh, Zoe, uh, the actress for Gamora, those two are fucking killing it. They're showing that it is okay to accept actors that are from different um, backgrounds and still show that whole true acting, And right? And so with, um, what's the name of the guy that uh, plays Arthur Harrow? Uh, Ethan Hawke. Ethan Hawke. Also a phenomenal actor. I honestly, that long hair makes him feel more culty. Because in the comics, he's, he has short hair with a be- like he with the long hair reminds me of um what was that uh, the cult leader name that was super famous um killed so many people Manson. over Manson. Yes, of... yeah, yeah, Manson. Right, he almost feels like Manson because of the long hair. He feels like that that crazy type of person that wants to make you feel like they're entirely civilized but not quite mm-hmm. it's honestly it's... with the... oh, continue honestly with Ethan Hawk, he just play, portrayed that role of a actual villain to the perfect we just need to see more of these characters to be fully honest because I want to see these guys have that actor connection to see that intensity, like we saw in that scene when he was trying to get the back to the stair up, and even in the museum where he has members everywhere, he's like, "I remember, I was there, I was just like, I thought you were like, like one of our workers, we we're like a little good buddies." And he's he's like, "Nah, I'm under this guy's wing, you know." And I I love how in the background characters as well, 
they see everything and like you feel like you're being watched as well like you see, you have no idea who you could trust yeah. in this film at, at this point yeah i agree. that that that's a that's actually a fantastic observation Lewis. holy shit because i i slightly saw it with the camera girl and in the ethan hawk scene in, in the museum like this i'm like this girl's staring at Oscar isaac's way too much and like you just find out like when when isaac is literally trying to run away the girl looks at him and pulls up her her sleeves I'm like oh god damn it See, i knew it this this show does does that so well and where they try to hide things in the background and in reflections of stuff like when the jackal comes out to attack him you can see him in the background stalking him. You can see him in the reflection yeah. of the glass yeah, cases. Yeah. Dude, that was so cool. It's like these little details that just makes the show even more enjoyable and rewatchable to go back to. Yeah. And the details with uh, Mark Spector in the reflection constantly talking to uh, Stephen Grant. Like the way that they are like, it's like disconnected, but it's still to him it's connected. Like it's disconnected from the world, but it's tied to him specifically. And it, how it affects the overall... Stephen Grant's overall actions is a really like nice detailing also the character my question is is and this is just more of like me watching episode one what benefit does Mark and Khonshu get for Stephen not knowing what is going on you well, know maybe that's the whole premise like, of the no, series no, no. so what my theory is it's that all right so from knowing uh, a little like a little bit of the comics and knowing a little bit of psychology what my idea right now is that the personality of Mark Spector is working with Khonshu, correct? And so what they're doing is they're doing their mission stuff. They're trying to get um, the the beetle away from Arthur yeah. so that they could, you know, not let him control everything. And they're trying to, like, again, Mark Spector is a mercenary. He used to be part of, the, I believe, the Navy SEALs back um, when he first started. Um, so he already knows how to fight, and Khonshu is looking for a champion to be the Moon Knight. So I feel like those two are working together. However, um, Stephen Grant was basically created out of uh, the need to protect Mark Spector. He needs that that personality to be sort of um, more known, more kind, better, loving. So what feels like is that Mark Spector is the real personality working with Khonshu. He already knows that the deal's in and everything. He's willing to work as the champion for Khonshu. However, the Stephen Grant personality, which is the personality that's supposed to protect Mark Spector, is taking over, but doesn't realize that he's supposed to be the protective personality. He starts to think that he is the main personality. And so that's what we're seeing. We're seeing a personality that's not the real one think it's the real one, and that's why everything is so twisted. That's what I think. That's my theory. Yeah, but it's like... It just feels like through this like whole episode, you feel this intense, I guess, sadness for Steven because, you know, his quote unquote mom, who I'm pretty sure is just a voicemail or something set up from Mark to have Steven talk to someone, is doesn't talk back to him. The statue in the park just doesn't talk to him. And it's like, why sentence or give this man such a lonely existence? And your explanation might make sense if it, if it ends up to be true. And I just think that, you know, it would be cool if they made uh, Steven the original, like, personality. And Mark was born out of Steven's need to defend himself or to be a person that he wanted to be, which he's which not is what, Which is uh, what I sort of – I mean, it's hard to tell because, again, they changed Steven Grant himself a this little bit. This is also bit. episode so, one of six. Yeah, yeah. So, but it, they also switched Steven Grant because even from the beginning, he's supposed to be the rich one, the, the playboy. Mm -hmm. So obviously they they took some creative writing because they they still wanted the the schizophrenic and the disassociative uh, personality disorder in Moon Knight. I also but they think they just to do didn't want a Batman clone too because that's what a lot yeah, of people that, were that, fearing. Yeah, that is true. But the thing is, for me, I just want to know more about Stephen Grant. Uh, I want to know whether if I'm correct or you're correct. If he's he came at the uh, before Mark Spector. But the thing is, I feel like. Even when he talks to his mom, I feel like she's dead and he doesn't know. And the reason why Mark Spector created Steven, or maybe the other way around, why Steven created Mark Spector is to cope with the death of the mother. And that's how we'll later find out that, oh, the mother's actually dead and it created a toll on either of the two characters. 
And that's why he created this. And Mark Spector, um, being the mercenary that he is, or the protector that he is, he allies himself with Khonshu and becomes the champion of the moon. But we also have to take into account that we haven't seen another personality, which is Mr. Knight. And how he plays Jake into Jake Lockley, this. if they even bring him. They do. I mean, it's They're going to bring him up. promotional art and everything. So who knows what's going to happen to that version of the character as well. I'm just excited to see how they flesh out Steven and Mark's per, like relationship. Because it's sort of like, in, like you see in those movies, like people are handcuffed together or like stuck together. It's sort of that, but just they're stuck in one body, two minds in one. And it's like going to be, I hope it's like one of like those buddy cop things. Where it's just Steven no, trying to not. come into grasp with everything. I hope not. I hope they keep that whole aspect of them trying to, like, not be not working together. Because th- again, that would like I want Steven to be that that person we sort of like have empathy for. It's it's like the person we relate to. Because like, Ex- imagine, yeah, because we're all lost. <laughs> imagine being Steven and going into like so. Let's say you go into this pyramid with all these different avatars of Egyptian gods, and you're just like. What the fuck is going on? That's sort of like our our character into the universe, like our world and our our perspective into the universe. Yeah, and I agree with Grim though. I would I would really like to see though one aspect is like with the the mom in particular because in the comics Moon Knight is like largely goes on to d- become what he is because of his father. So if they were to use that. The, his mother in this case or whoever his family a loss of a family member is a linchpin for that would be really good for character growth and for the viewers to see that yeah um with this show what i'm expecting and hoping for later on is that they keep on bringing psychological aspects because uh the last time we saw a good psychological aspect was with wandavision and we saw yeah. how that went so i hope that they keep the whole moon knight be a psychological character sort of with like split they they keep those different personalities always coming and disappearing and being part of what moon knight is supposed to be so i'm I'm excited to see what else comes again like i said this is a 8.5 or 9 out of 10 it's fantastic i just feel like that whole scene where in the alps where everybody's speaking an american accent even though they're all in europe is just weird I have, a, I have a question for that because I've seen online a little and Moon Knight's been everywhere and people have been loving it but I've seen fans like hardcore comic fans of Moon Knight criticize it a little bit because it's not like like you were talking about Stephen Grant isn't the same as he was in the comics and isn't the same persona so I don't know do you guys think that at times it can divert like the MCU diverts a little bit from the like what how this at least the core of the characters at times so my opinion on that and it sort of goes back to the argument of should you stick to the source material heavily or lightly or create your own version of the character i say if it makes the story better you can change the character up yeah if it makes sense because again i'm not bothered by the whole changing um Stephen Grant, that doesn't bother me at all. It's just, it makes me question what they're going to do next. And so I want to yeah. see more. Uh, it's also good in a way because we don't know anything about this Steve Grant. So anything could happen. And I am all for it because the first episode itself had so much to unpack, had so much to take into consideration that you only wish to know what else is to happen next. Yeah, and with what you said, Zach, this is a different Stephen Grant than we see in the comics, but they also give us a lot of Stephen in this episode to sort of set up this character because at the end of the day, it's his journey and through his eyes that we're going to experience this series. So, yeah, to be honest with you, I I wouldn't be surprised if they change that up, though. Like, next, like, let's say two episodes down, right? They change it. They change the perspective to be solely focused on Mark Spector. I wouldn't be surprised if they just changed it or like change it next episode because that's how that like that would be a great way to twist the psychological because you like you're talking about uh something different than what you just saw because they change they start to change your perspective a lot or we could even see psychological changes in steven grant himself so because that's what i I wanted to see game theory that steven grant turns to become mr knight 
in a way See, that I was just about to say something similar, yeah. He gets so traumatized by the shit he sees through Mark and through what's going on around him that he becomes this defender, this brutal detective defender. And I thought I think that would be fucking sick. I don't know how they would do that. But like I said, whatever they do with this character, it looks like they're always showing to have great promise with how they want to adapt this character into a live action show. And I'm all for it still. It's not it hasn't lost interest to me. And also something that Ralph and Lewis point out to me, I think, or maybe Ralph only, was that this did what Peacemaker couldn't do in three fucking episodes. Yeah. It gave us the plot. Ralph it introduced us out. to our main character. It gave us Don't sympathy get me for them. Story with, it, with Peacemaker. <laughs> I'm just saying that Peacemaker with its gripes, the Moon Knight definitely did a lot better introducing us to the character of Moon Knight and Mark Spector and the supporting cast of I'm other just, loony personalities. Oh. The only thing, the only thing I will say for like Peacemaker and all that is that I think they didn't want to reintroduce him because we just saw him in a movie that someone introduces him, and this is just giving giving us small details throughout the episodes. That's the only the only thing I would say for for Peacemaker. Got it. Yeah. Plus, uh, Moon Knight was re- the marketing for Moon Knight was also really really good in a way that like. They they showed small uh, tidbits here and there with like the, the I think trailer. it was like the New Year the trailer. Yeah, yeah which like is so pretty great. much ninety. Yeah, pretty much you you get to see like pretty much all of it, like almost all of the trailer, literally in this first episode. And now you're kind of like, oh shit, we just saw all of it. We don't know we, anything. Well, not all. And that's what's amazing are, about it. There are no, some promotional like images. I'm no, sorry, yeah. Lewis. Go on, Lewis. Uh, I, I would say, to continue what Ralph says, like, we gave a good 90% of the trailers into the thing, but I do agree with you, like, n- some of the promotional stuff, they did show other things. Oh, and yeah, they showed a lot more wait. of Ethan Hawke's character and Oscar Isaac's character together at times, and just more, I tried not to, I just, like, you know, promotional stuff, you can't avoid it now it, with social media and everything, but, like, I tried to stay off of it, and though I did see a lot more that wasn't in the trailer, so I know there's more to come, it's just how far along that is in our story before we get to the end of episode yeah, personally, six. Yeah, personally, I've only watched the, um, I've only watched the first trailer, like, the Super Bowl trailer, and, like, the other yearly teasers and stuff like that, but I, right after that trailer came out, I stopped, wa- like, right after the Super Bowl trailer, I stopped watching any of it, I think. Like, yeah, I, I tried to, too, but it just... I think... So, it, like, as someone who just watched that, that was so much... But I think, I think so I think Marvel, Marvel is good with how much they want to show. I think it's yeah. just that it's to your discretion how much you want to see. I think stuff like right. with Morbius and well, we'll talk about if you see our Morbius video, you know what we're talking yeah. about. Most of the movies in the trailer, and I feel like Marvel specifically, my Marvel Studios does a good job of giving you a taste, but not giving you the cake, you know. And that's why I'm not too worried about that. But generally, I think we're we're pretty good on like not trying to give ourselves too much information about the movie before it comes out. Uh, I but, did get uh, I but, did get spoiled by one scene with Moon Knight, which I got me a little annoyed. Like that was one part I'm like, Marvel, you could have left that whole scene oh, out because it, it's it very big scene? moment. It was a sex scene, wasn't it, <laughs> bro? <laughs> no, it's like Moon Knight does. I'm not gonna spoil it, but he does this really badass moment, and I okay, okay, wish then, I then just, just stop. myself. Then just stop. Okay. Nah, you you were spoiled. God damn it, Zach. We're, we're gonna cut, we're gonna cut that out. No, we're not. Dude, we're literally it literally does nothing. How about, how, about, how about we believe it or some shit? We, might, we keep it in oh, there. Oh lord, just yeah. We'll, yeah, just wave it, just wave it. Sure. All right. But how about you just cut it then at this point? All right. To talk about that whole a taste of the cake but not eat it yet, let's talk about how we actually saw a mythical creature, the jackal. Like, this shows that they will take a lot of inspiration from the comic books, and we will see werewolves, we will see vampires, we will see all these type of outside of the norm characters things that you don't see with the avengers things that you like the the extraordinary um villains and characters and i am super hyped for that i am excited to see the mythical world behind marvel because with um dr strange we didn't get to see much we saw more like the multiversal type of magic and like you know like outside the regular realm magic but with this we see medieval type of a uh, magic we see things that are supposed to be quote-unquote realistic in magic 
yeah, which we I, haven't seen yet. I think for me, it's just uh, how I always saw it was that Doctor Strange introduced the concept of like magical things happening in the MCU, right? And like you know, Thor, Thor, and like his series and his movies brought out you know the Norse side. Uh, Doctor Strange bringing out the mystical, and then uh, Moon Knight bringing out more of the other gods that we haven't seen yet. You know, because with Eternals we have most of the other Greek uh, Greek gods and Greek mythology, but then we also have uh, Moon Knight showing the Egyptian gods and their mythology, and it kind of needs uh, brings around nicely to like you said the mythical side of the MCU, which is also coincidentally going to be very nice when Multiverse of Madness comes out. And we expand that even further. Which is amazing. I like more the mythical side, mystical side of uh, MCU and Marvel rather than what we got with in the in the MCU already. So it's nice that we're exploring a bit more and that we're treading waters that we haven't seen quite yet. Personally, what I like most about Moon Knight is that this doesn't really feel like we're watch like it doesn't really feel like we're watching something Marvel. Mm -hmm. But we are at the same time. It feels like we are, but we are at the same time. It's a nice balance of like street it's, level. It's just insane. It's like this nice balance of street level, like crime and like fighting, versus <clears throat> versus like mystical deities being involved and stuff. So yeah. You, you know what I would compare this to? What? Like a mixture of Black Adam with a Daredevil. That's yeah. what we're seeing. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. That's that's, that's a pretty accurate that, representation. That's what yeah. Moon Knight is. You got a, a, a golden star for that one. That was, there, that was it's, a good one. It's, it's a Daredevil level hero with um obviously certain tools that are a little bit outside of the like regular norms, like the Crescent Moons. But the, every threat that he faces is almost like on a Black Adam level. And it's fucking fantastic. I can't wait to see more, especially since, like I mentioned, we're seeing Victorian creatures appear. And I, I can't wait to see him beat up a werewolf that's what i'm saying i can't wait for him to grab a werewolf <laughs> by its ear be like listen here motherfucker and just smack him in the jugular true that true that i i'm just yeah. excited for the rest of the series i really hope this sticks to landing from how it started and it doesn't just falter down it would really be disappointing if it does like if it yeah. if this thing bottoms out at any point it's gonna very much derail the hype train that it's currently chugging on just one episode yep and to be honest yeah. with you no i don't think that's true you don't think it'll bottom out even no no i mean if it bottoms out it wouldn't make a difference well i guess it depends on how it happens but yeah maybe all i'm saying is i hope they keep staying strong with this series and that we really get to see more Moon Knight in action in later episodes. And, uh, yeah. Grim, do you want to wrap this one up for us? Alright, well, obviously, Moon Knight had a fantastic start. We all uh, can't wait to see more. Uh, this actually shows a difference out of the MCU. We want to see more. And with all the love we have for it, unlike other shows that were, like, stuff that we've commented on, it, so far, it, it started off great. <laughs> So far, it started off great. It looks like it's going to continue to be great. And please keep it up. This this is the type of content we want to see. Now, the only thing I would suggest is make sure that your cast is in a total whitewash. You know, like if you're in the Netherlands, try to find some Netherland actors. Just yeah, saying, though. Yeah, we that cultural diversity yeah, shit, man. Yeah, see, exactly. We want, we want to hear different voices. Like, for example, Oscar Isaac and his accent were phenomenal. So please keep bringing accents. Keep doing what you've been doing amazingly and we'll see you on the next episode bye Good night. It's... that's my thing stop it <laughs> boy i'll better stop you oh uh, i'll start you if you know what i'm saying man. yo can i get some wait <laughs>